Okay, so in this video, I want to talk about what happened in Moscow. And it's really a significant thing that we don't know the cause. We think we doubt now know who did it. Um, and but there were all kinds of theories coming out early on. And, and you know, I would I had a predilection one way and Jackson Hinkle apparently had a predilection the other other direction. Uh, Ukraine did it. They will pay. Well, did they do it? Like, I understand how if you are pro Russia, you might have thought that immediately. That makes sense. And you would think that but you can't just articulate something and say, that's it, as if that's it, because there could be more to the story. Zelensky and his office denied it. The Ukraine emphatically denied it. They had nothing to do with it. And they don't mind destroying Russians everywhere they can destro destroy them, but they had nothing to do with it, they say. And so here, the U.S. is also echoing that. Moscow concert attack, no Ukrainian involvement in deadly attack, uh, the U.S. says. So Zelensky says it, the Americans say it, and then we see stuff like this. This is on Judging Freedom with Andrew Napolitano, and he has Larry Johnson, an ex-CIA analyst, who is uh, saying, well, I, you know, the U.S. was involved with it. How many attackers there were? We still don't know what weapons were used. We've heard gunshots, we've heard explosions, but we don't know any specifics. And yet the State Department's out said, Ukraine didn't do it. Ukraine didn't do it. No, they know, because they know that Ukraine did. And here's how we know. March 7th. The United States Embassy, Moscow, and the UK Embassy, Moscow, issue a warning to a travel advisor to all Americans and British citizens. Stay away, there's going to be a terrorist attack within 48 hours. Now, that didn't happen. Those kinds of warnings are only issued when you have specific, credible information and cannot prevent the attack. So this means the United States knew that Ukraine had something in the pipeline, they knew what they were, they had some idea what they're going to do. And the odds are that not only did Ukraine do it, but they did it with weapons and, and, and assistance provided by the United States. Okay, that's wild speculation. The U.S. knew something was afoot. The U.S. told Russia something was afoot. Russia ignored it because, and I get why Russia would ignore it. That makes sense to me that, you know, hey, you know, this could be some kind of trick by the United States to kind of get inside our heads or something along those lines. But the U.S. did warn them and... Okay, so that's what he says. And now I think to speculate is one thing. If you're saying, hey, it could be this, but he's not speculating. He's saying it happened. This is what happened. This is how it happened. Uh, let's look at this one. This is Douglas McGregor saying the perpetrators of the terrorist attack in Russia escaped from Russia into Ukraine near Belgorod. And, are, and that was that turned out to be false and are directly tied to Muslim elements fighting on behalf of Ukraine. What? <laughs> Where does he even get this kind of thinking from? Were they originally ISIS or something else? I have no idea, but there's little doubt that MI6 CIA were involved. Okay, so I believe that he believes there's little doubt, but that makes me question his thinking, right? Um, it, it makes sense that Ukraine would want to attack Russia, but if until the facts are there, until you can establish the facts, you can't say things like that. Well, I mean, he can because he doesn't really care about how accurate he is, apparently, but you, you shouldn't say things like that. Here's another guy saying uh, something similar. This is a UK member of Parliament, George Galloway, who's who um, on who is behind the terrorist attack. And here we go. When the US and the UK and others swiftly tried to reassure me that it was only ISIS that carried out this mass murder in Moscow, I knew automatically that they were lying. And now I am working back. So because the U.S. reassures you that it was this group, not that group, you knew automatically? Really? Um, that doesn't sound quite right. And here's what I'm finding. I'm finding, first of all, that no one, no one has explained the unannounced visit of President Barack Obama to meet British political and security officials in 10 Downing Street three days before this terrorist crime was carried out. So just because something happens in time and space before another thing, it doesn't mean that it caused it. So Barack Obama could have been showing up to play chess because he's an, you know chess enthusiast and so is the prime minister and they decided they were going to play chess. I'm making that up completely, right? Sounded legitimate, but I made it up.
it could be that. It could be anything. It doesn't mean that just because they met, this is what caused it. And so this is a little bit nonsensical. But it gets worse. Working further back, I discovered that Victoria Newland, that harbinger of death, go. that angel of death, who, if she comes anywhere near you, be sure a civil war is coming in your country. I saw her with my own eyes. Promise the Russians some nasty surprises in the next few weeks. Okay, this is what you call political rhetoric. I saw it with my own eyes. At Victoria. She's an angel of death. Okay, really? All right, so we're going to discount that. But that's one of the theories that's out there. Okay, this I particularly appreciate because John Sweeney actually says, you know what, I got it wrong. Let's listen to what he has to say. War Diary Day 760. I now believe that the attack on the Crocus Hall in Moscow was not a black flag operation, so I was wrong about that. Um, and he says black flag, it's the same as a false flag operation. It's always difficult to work out what's happening in Russia because Vladimir Putin has had all the truth tellers shot or locked up or silenced. Yeah, that's a really good point. Like, it is hard to figure out what's actually happening because you can't figure out who's actually telling the truth because all you have is a state party line in Russia. Well, they fall out of windows. But that said, um, Insider has come up with um, some solid work showing that the, um, the, the attackers, if you look at the video of the attackers, which Islamic State have released, and you look at the uh, the clothes that the um, the four men are wearing on the Russian videos, they're the same people. And therefore, you've got to conclude that this was not a black flag uh, or a false flag operation by the Russians. This was, in fact, an attack by Islamic State. And the Russians were caught napping. The reason they were that so is because they, under Putin, they have dreamt up this ridiculous fantasy that Ukraine is in some way their enemy and they've invested all of this blood and treasure and created all of this agony on a false premise while ignoring a real threat of, uh, from radical Islam. And there are real threats from radical Islam. So it could be that it was just ISIS, the Islamic State. Okay, let's go on and look at another theory. And I'm showing you the different ways that we can approach this because I, I think it's useful for our thinking to really try to uh, wrestle with how we should be thinking about the thinking. Because it could be this or it could be that. And some are more probable or less probable. Here's Jake Bro and how he was working it out. And uh, this is interesting. Moscow Concert Hall shooting, a provocation by Putin's FSB, according to Ukrainian intelligence. So was this solely ISIS wanting to do this on their own? Or did the FSB arrange for this to happen? Did the FSB, through their Muslim proxies, pay these men to come to Moscow to carry out this terrorist attack? This story seems much more likely given all the irregularities. Let me just hit you with a couple of these weird, weird coincidences. The first one being this exact same concert hall back in 2022 was used for a simulated terrorist attack by Ukrainian forces, taking people hostage and killing them in the theater where an actual terrorist attack would occur this month. Now, that in and of itself doesn't mean anything, but he's right to point out, that's a little odd. Okay. How Moscow terror attack exposes the farce of Russia's security theater. Moscow is one of the most surveilled and police-heavy cities in the world. You can't stand on a street corner and hold a blank piece of paper for longer than 30 seconds without being arrested. So how were these four gunmen able to run wild for 90 minutes and then escape in their car and drive 500 kilometers away from Moscow? This is how bizarre this gets. The Crocus City Hall is a five minute drive from the main directorate of the National Guard Troops Service for the Russian Federation in the city of Moscow. 
So five minutes away from this mass shooting, there are thousands of Russian security forces whose job is to handle these kinds of incidents. And despite all these Russian civilians calling emergency services, posting on social media, none of these guys drove down the street to stop the terrorist attack. Here's a video I'll link down below. I'm not going to read it because he swears too much, but this is a Russian man who used to be an employee at the Crocus City Hall. And he's convinced that the FSB was behind the attack because Putin needs a justification for mass conscription, for mass mobilization. If Putin actually wants to take the cities of Kharkiv, Zaporizhia, and Odessa, he's probably going to need hundreds of thousands, if not a million more soldiers in his military. So this man says that the owner of the concert hall is a billionaire who put a ton of money into the best security systems, the best fire extinguisher systems, and for a fire to start in this concert hall and the fire extinguisher systems didn't even go off. There was no security at the concert hall. It's pretty weird. So it seems improbable that four guys would have been able to figure all that out or whatever, but maybe maybe that's what happened. I, I don't know. Uh, let's watch one more thing. I have a theory. I have uh, previously stated that I believe Putin knew about the upcoming attack and did nothing to prevent it. So where there, there's different positions. The uh, Ukraine did it. The United States did it. ISIS alone did it. It was a false flag. It was not a false flag, but it was Russia working with ISIS to do it. Or maybe it was that Russia allowed it to happen. Like th this is the range of possibilities. Um, okay, so uh, Putin knew about the upcoming attack and did nothing to prevent it because he wanted to blame it on Ukraine and unite and mobilize the country. But what if that wasn't his reason for not stopping the attack? What if he wanted a big terrorist attack to take place so that the world even temporarily, stop seeing Russia as the aggressor and thinks of it as a victim. Now, that's that's a really interesting thought. Or what if he wanted to uh, mobilize by saying there are other threats around us, not just Ukraine, so that they could raise an army in order to go to Ukraine? I, I don't know what the answer is here. I You know, Jay could be right. Uh, I, well, okay, so here's what I know. Jackson Hinkle's not right, okay? I, I'm pretty sure the odds are... So you look at all of the... Uh, um, range of options and you say and you try to narrow down what could be possible and then when Ukraine's saying they didn't do it when they have every reason to do something to Russia and they deny it and the US deny that 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 uh they were involved or that Ukraine was involved like this makes it very very small possibility and so you'd start to go through the other possibilities he said no they said no um he says yes and he's kind of a crackpot who says yes about lots of stuff and McGregor saying thing discount this guy is a little off the beaten trail as well uh so you know where do you land so i want you to think through the possibilities and then think through what's more likely what's less likely and i don't even know i mean it could be that it was just isis it could be that it was isis in concert with with russia or russia creating uh, isis as a prop or something or it could be that they simply allowed it for some reason i don't know but we want to think through it what I want you to do, what I want you to take away from this is to use your own mind and try to make sense of what are the most likely, what are the least likely scenarios so that you can think through this rather than sim simply repeat somebody else's talking point. Because you got to engage in critical thinking as well in order to not just deal with this, but to deal with everything in life. Okay, tell me what you think or how you perceive this in the comments below. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and the coffees. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.